Welcome to Easy Alim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at the topic structure and boarding. And the subtopic for today is ionic structures. So previously we discussed on ionic compounds and we were able to see how ionic compounds are usually formed using the dot and cross structures. So today we are going to look at the ionic structures that are formed from that bonding and also look at some of the properties of these ionic structures. So first, uh, giant ionic structures are usually results from ionic bonding. So they usually come in form of a structure with ions that are bonded by strong ionic bonds throughout. And it, each ion in the giant ionic structure is surrounded by several other um, others resulting into a giant pattern of several ions, hence the giant, giant ionic structures. So most of the ionic substances are crystalline in nature, and crystals are usually solid of a substance with the particles that are arranged in a definite pattern, in a definite regular pattern. An example is sodium chloride. If you look at sodium chloride, for example, we take the sodium at the center. This sodium is bonded by this hydrogen, and there's another hydrogen on top. There's another hydrogen on the side, and this hydrogen on the side, and this hydrogen on the side, and this hydrogen on the side. So for every sodium ion, it's bonded to six chloride ion. And then every one chloride ion is bonded to six sodium ion. And you can see that interchangeably. So the same applies if we, to, we take one hydrogen, it does so above, below, on the sides, and also on the other side. So that is what happens. This is an example of sodium chloride. That is a table salt. It's usually, you can see, it's usually in crystal form. So some of the properties of giant ionic structures is that they are hard and brittle. When we talk about them being hard and brittle is because when they are in solid state, they are usually hard, and each ion is held in the crystal by strong attractions to the oppositely charged ion. So they are brittle because they split when heat or with a compound, and when that is done, they sort of like displace the arrangement of the ion. So because of that displacement of the arrangement, the similar charges end up facing each other and we know similar charges are going to repel. So when they separate, they cause now the crystal to, um, to separate or to break. So the forces of the two uh, crystals will cause it to split apart. So let me show you what I mean. So when you look at... Uh, for example, a crystalline structure, I'm just going to use this as an example. So the larger circles will present the positive uh, ions, and then the smaller ones are going to present the negative ions. So you notice that um, when they are like this, they are attracted. The negative attracts the positive, negative attracts positive. So when you hit this, um, when you hit this, for example, with uh, an instrument, what happens it causes the rearrangement. So what you notice is that instead of the way they were arranged initially, you notice that all the positive ions are aligned with each other there is that there is that rearrangement that happens when that rearrangement happens you notice the ions now face each other that have similar charges so when that happens they repel with each other and that breakage happens between the the atom or the crystal so the crystal is broken as a result so they also have very high melting points and boiling points. Uh, the reason why they have high melting points and boiling points is because ionic bonds are generally very strong. 
and they usually require a lot of energy to break them. And then the next property is solubility. They are very soluble in water, especially in polar solvent. When you talk about polar solvent, like water is usually polar in nature. We'll talk about this in detail when you come to molecular compounds, but this means that the opposite ends of our water molecules are charged. So when you look at a water molecule, we are going to draw the water molecule later on. You notice it is charged. We have a, a oxygen which is partially negative and hydrogen which is partially positive. So what happens when uh, an ionic compound dissolves in water? It dissociates in water or it detaches in water, which we refer to as solvation. And when it detaches, for example, sodium chloride, which was held together by a strong ionic bond, so it detaches to form sodium ions and chloride ions, which are free to move about in the water. So you see, since uh, water has those polar charges, the sodium, which is positively charged, attracts itself towards the sodium, the oxygen, sorry, that is negatively charged. And then the chloride ions attract itself to the positively charged hydrogen uh, atom in the water. So this is what we call, we say that polar substances dissolve other polar substances. So you see they form, they dissolve in solution and attract themselves to the water molecule. And when the water, when the solvent, in this case water, uh, in the ions that are in the water, we say they're usually hydrated. We talk about the energy of hydration and hydration later on in details when you get to form four, when you talk about lattice energy in thermochemistry. So they're usually insoluble in polar substances and some and polar substances are like tetrachloromethane. We have benzene, we have hexane. These nonpolar molecules are usually held together by weak Bader-Waals forces, so they are not able to like form those uh, charges which can cause the the crystals to separate or to solvate. So they cannot be able to attract to the there is no like ion ion interaction interaction between the ions in the solution so for example like our sodium chloride that we were talking about so it's not able to break this board between sodium and chloride ion so it's not able even to break the board not only like attracting it now into the solvent itself so that is what happens so nonpolar do not have those polar ends then electrical conductivity ionic substances do not conduct electricity in solid state this is because their ions are held in solid crystal or in fixed positions they are fixed they cannot move about and we need the ions to move about so that they can conduct electricity so they only conduct electricity in molten state or in solution state this is because the ions are free or mobile. So we say they are free or mobile. So they conduct in these two states only. So let's look at a few questions and then we end the session. So the diagram below represents part of the structure of a sodium chloride crystal. The position on one of the sodium ions in the crystal is known as is shown. So this is the position it has already been shown. On the diagram, mark the positions of the other three sodium ions. So we said this sodium is bordered to a chloride ion, this side, chloride ion, this side, chloride ion, this side, and chloride ion, this side. So we know that this is chloride ion, this is chloride ion. We don't have for the internal ones, but we know this is chloride ion. This tells you whatever is here is sodium. And also, since this is chloride and chloride ion, it tells you what is here is sodium. So below is going to be chloride ion. So on the side, it's going to be sodium. So you see sodium is located here, here, and here. So we have shown those other three sodium ions.
melting point of sodium chloride is uh, 810 and the boiling point is 1423 degrees celsius respectively explain why sodium chloride does not conduct electricity at 25 degrees celsius and 1430 degrees celsius so first of all in 25 degrees celsius it's going to be in solid state so we said the reason why it does not conduct in solid state because the ions are in fixed position. So if they are in fixed positions, they are not free to move about. And when you talk about 1413 is usually in Gaseia state. So we'll talk about gaseous ions later on in another topic. So let's leave it at the ions are in fixed state, especially at 25 degrees Celsius. Next, the table below shows some properties of substances I, J, K, and L. As you can see the properties, so you can see I in solid state does not conduct, but it conducts in molten. It has this melting point and boiling point. J conducts both both in solid and molten state. K does not conduct in both molten and solid state, and L does not conduct in both molten and solid state. So from what we have just discussed, even without the question, if you were to identify the ionic board, we know it's going to be I. This is because ionic compounds do not conduct electricity in solid state because the ions are in fixed position but they conduct in molten state because the ions are free or they are mobile so that brings us to the end uh, in the next session you're going to be looking at covalent boards so let's see you then